Multiple severe weather threats are coming from severe weather in the northeast on Sunday, two parts of the central plains Monday, Tuesday, as you just saw on your screen. We've got a lot on the way, including this big sector of summer-like air that is fueling it all. In this video, I'm going to cover not only the warmth and the storms, but also the entire weather pattern ahead, so stick around. One Nation Weather as always, I appreciate you being here with me at One Nation Weather. Don't forget that many of the maps I use are from Weatherbell. There's a trial link to them right down there in the description. Also, it won't take long. Hit that subscribe button if you enjoy this video and find the content valuable. Now, let's get right into this and take a look at the future radar here from the European model. Looking at the pattern overview, I want to start out here in the northeastern United States Sunday afternoon and evening. We've got a surprise chance of severe weather. We'll break it down a little bit more here in a second. But over Pennsylvania, southern New York, some of these zones even into eastern Ohio, parts of northern west. Virginia. It's going to be a really interesting finish to the day with the potential for gusty winds, some hail in some of these storms, one to two inches in diameter, as well as maybe a brief spin-up tornado or two. Again, we'll break that down a little bit more here in just a second. Meanwhile, though, this is what the main concern that everybody's been talking about is as we head towards late Monday, looking like showers and storms are going to develop from parts of the eastern Rockies coming off there into parts of Wyoming and South Dakota, all the way back down here along a dry line to where the severe weather threat is more prominent in Kansas, Oklahoma, and North Texas. You can see that evolution expected late Monday night going into early Tuesday, a little bit later than initially seen here on some of these models. Nonetheless, this is looking like an intense system, could bring significant severe weather, so everybody in the Central Plains especially needs to be on high alert late Monday going into early Tuesday, and some of the severe weather will probably continue along the warm and cold front here, heading eastward into parts of Iowa, Illinois, Missouri, back on down to north, northeast Texas there, and northern parts of Louisiana. Through the day Tuesday, heavy rain as well over a lot of the northern plains. Continue Continuing to play our future radar out here, you can see by the late Tuesday, early Wednesday time frame, probably some storms continuing through parts of the Midwest, all the way back on down towards parts of the central Mississippi Valley, including places like Memphis, Tennessee, maybe into Tupelo, Mississippi. Even into the day late Wednesday, we're seeing some increase in confidence that we could see some storms erupting as our low continues into parts of the Great Lakes. Those storms would probably be concentrated over Indiana, Ohio, back down um, even towards parts of Tennessee. We could is isolate it in at least isolated fashion and see some storms over parts of New York, Pennsylvania, on over there towards Long Island and the Cape Cod region as well. And then look at this, another storm system with severe weather potential looking to get going as we head towards late Thursday. That's a little bit more of a story for another time, but I certainly think parts of the Mississippi Valley back down to the Southern Plains, looking to get in on some action, maybe even the Central Plains, late Thursday, um, going into early Friday and continuing from there a little bit eastward as you've got some remnant energy and a cooler blast that's going to come late next week. We'll talk about that at the end of the video, so still some more to cover there. But again, let's talk about the Sunday severe weather risk outlook. I promised I'd break it down. Here it is. It's looking like we've got a level three of five enhanced severe weather risk from the Storm Prediction Center over parts of central Pennsylvania, from parts of Lancaster, all the way on over there to Scranton and surrounding areas. I think in some of these zones we could locally see in some of these areas I'm hashing out, maybe a 70 mile per hour wind gust. I think that's going to be the highest threat as we head through our Sunday, late day into the evening hours. Could we see some brief supercells with tornadoes and some hail? Yes, that's also not out of the question. And again, look at this tornado parameter. This is your tornado energy. It goes on a scale of 0 to 10 on each model. And this is the HRRR model, one of our trusty short range models, giving us a look that some threes, some fours might try to get going there, and especially in northwestern Pennsylvania. That's where I think at least a 2 to 5% chance of a tornado within 25 miles of a point will exist, and that's per the Storm Prediction Center as well, of course. And taking a look at the future radar, this is what's going to help us time this out. You can see 9 at 10 a.m. in the morning here on our Sunday. We've already got some winds kicking up over a lot of this region. It's going to be a very breezy day, probably some wind advisories. Heavy rain coming off parts of Lake Ontario there as well, moving into Rochester, Syracuse, all down there towards Utica as well, and Binghamton there in New York. So pretty much a lot of upstate New York getting drenched to start the day, but it's on the flank and the rear flank really so to speak of this rainfall that we're going to see potential for some storms there could be at least some firing up by four five six o'clock in the afternoon in these zones i'm circling here from there, it's looking like storms will continue to progress towards the south, and I think they're going to get their most intense right around sundown. Still got some of that peak daytime heating. Now you've got some of the atmospheric energy moving in as well. So again, if I live here through parts of State College, Pennsylvania, Lewistown, areas northeastward from there as well, on over to Scranton as well, these are all those zones where I think severe weather chances will be at their highest, far southern New York also included in the risk, of course. And then you can see from there, again, maybe some tornadoes trying to get going in these cells towards Pittsburgh, surrounding areas into far northern West Virginia as these sink southward in the later evening time frame. But I really think it's a pretty short window that these storms have to be severe. 
Nonetheless, something will track even in places like Columbus, Ohio, south of New York City as these sink southward closer to midnight. Now, as we head towards Monday, this is what's been on the table for a while. Could get eventually upgraded to a level 4 of 5 moderate from the Storm Prediction Center, which is in that red shaded color on the key at the bottom. With a low here over parts of Colorado and Wyoming, we're going to get a south to north flow over the central plains, looking like we're going to get plenty of warmth, plenty of moisture, plenty of ingredients for severe weather over the central plains, especially here from parts of southeast Nebraska through central Kansas, especially including Wichita. And on down to Oklahoma City and Wichita Falls there in north Texas, of course, that's where Wichita Falls is there on the map. Even areas just west of Dallas looking at the highest severe weather risk. And these probabilities are for within 25 miles of a point. Of course, we'll get more details as we get closer. But as I film this at the end of your Saturday here, this is what the outlook looks like for our Monday, late afternoon, evening, and then especially into the night parts of Nebraska, all the way back down to West Texas along that dry line, and I'll show you what a dry line is here in just a second. That's where it's looking like we've got a 15 to even 30 percent chance of severe weather within 25 miles of a point, likely including including a few tornadoes, but especially very large hail, um, and then as well some gusty winds on the table. If we get an upgrade in the risk, it looks like it would especially be for the hail threat. Dew points measure moisture, and anything in the upper 50s getting into the 60s, that's where you're really getting ripe for severe weather. You can see by Monday mid-afternoon, it's going to be very warm We'll talk temperatures as well towards the end of this video, so still a lot more to cover. But you can see through Texas, Oklahoma, into Kansas, plenty of low to mid-60s, sufficient enough for some modest severe weather for sure. We can see that warm front lifting this moisture northward as we head towards late Monday going into early Tuesday. I think there could be some underrated storms right now into parts of southern Iowa, parts of Nebraska, Missouri along that warm front with the low pressure off towards the northwest there in South Dakota as we had late Monday and into early Tuesday. Now our dry line that I promised I tell you about, right, that's right there into parts of western Nebraska, western Kansas, Panhandle of Oklahoma, Panhandle of Texas as well, where you can see those dew points on the 60s on the right side of it on the eastern side. Dew points closer to zero on the western side as it is really dry over there. That's why it's called the dry line. And that boundary meeting really helps to support that severe weather. And you can see we've also got a mid-level jet streak trying to become negatively tilted, which just means it's trying to be um, it tilted a little bit more vertically there and try to stretch on up further into Kansas. Look at this. This is your low-level wind. Look at the key at the bottom. We've got a 50 to 60 knot low-level jet. Winds are going to be howling from the south over the plains and a lot of zones here already even right at the surface. Moving from the west is where the winds are going to be coming from further up in the atmosphere. That's going to create some rotation. And here's my latest ONW severe weather scale graphic. This is as we go towards Monday, again, mostly into the evening and nighttime hours. Despite the later storm development that's expected in general, I'm maintaining a level 4 of 7 on my risk scale in many parts of the enhanced risk zone that the Storm Prediction Center has highlighted. I also think that warm front storms could be worth tracking towards Missouri, which is why I've got a 3 there, into parts of northern Kansas, even into Nebraska, far southwestern Iowa. That's why we've got a 3 on the scale there. If you're in any color on that map, I'm really thinking that you need to be at least somewhat weather aware and know your safe space, which is your lowest most interior room in your home or building as we head towards late Monday going into early Tuesday. Here we go towards Tuesday itself during the day and then towards the evening and nighttime there. I think we're going to have two focal points within this 15% zone, which is again for within 25 miles of a point that the Storm Prediction Center is highlighting. It's going to be one up there to closer to the Midwest. I think that's where we could see more supercells capable of potentially not only damaging winds, some hail, but also some maybe strong tornadoes. We'll see how that goes. And additionally, another threat closer down there towards the Arklatex and areas northeast of Dallas. Storm energy is measured in joules per kilogram. It goes on a 0 to 6,000 scale. I know there's a lot of scales I've been mentioning in this video, but pretty much you can see here on your screen, any of these colors in greens getting into the yellows, you're talking a 1,000 plus. And that's at least modest. You rarely see it get on up there to 4,000 to 6,000. So this is pretty decent to see numbers getting on up there towards 1,500 to 2,000 there in parts of Iowa, Missouri late Tuesday. Back there in northeast Texas, northern Louisiana, southwestern Arkansas late Tuesday as well. And again, you can kind of see those two zones just on the storm energy chart, and that's why I've got them separated. Again, supercells possible all along this, though. As we had late Tuesday going into Wednesday, I think we could at least see a few tornadoes both out of the threat Monday and then here into the threat Tuesday and Tuesday night as well. 
especially on over there into the prominent zone that I've got highlighted with a 3 of 7 on my O&W severe scale, including northern Missouri, northwestern Illinois, southwestern Wisconsin, a lot of Iowa, and in fact the whole state. As we head towards Tuesday and Tuesday evening, that's where the two zones appear most prominent for those storms. Supercells appearing most likely near a triple point where the warm front meets the cold front there. And Iowa, again, this is late Tuesday, the southern zone, though, having better ingredients closer to the surface, and that's something we'll also have to track there into parts of Texas, Oklahoma, Arkansas, where I've got a 3 of 7. Again, if you're in any level on the screen, keep that in mind. And it looks like I'm getting increased certainty here. I don't think it's quite as high as Tuesday, though, this 3 of 7 on my scale. But I do have a 3 of 7 on the scale as we head towards Wednesday, April 17th here over parts of the Ohio Valley for an elevated severe storm potential that could continue there. So a lot to track in the weather department, and that includes temperatures here. If you have any questions, by the way, always leave those in the chat. Weather.gov is your best source for the latest weather information. Anyway here, April 14th in the morning, Sunday, Plenty of 60s over parts of the Mississippi Valley, the Southern Plains. By the afternoon here, Sunday, even if I'm not mentioning your location, you can still see the key at the bottom and see your location on the map here in the U.S. Plenty of 80s and 90s, even some record-breaking 90s there in parts of Kansas. Some 80s in western Illinois here as we go through the day, Sunday, April 14th. Very warm. Plenty of 80s close to the Gulf Coast and the southeast coast of the United States as well. Monday morning lows, we're going to wake up to 50s and 60s over pretty much all of the south, maybe excluding Alabama for some reason. <laughs> There's a little bit of some cooler that could be lingering there. Nonetheless, back on over there into south central plains, some, some spots even near 70 to start the day. That is insane. Monday afternoon, we're getting on up into the 80s, even some temperatures getting near the mid 80s and 90s there. Plenty supportive of severe weather. Towards Tuesday early morning with the low on up there over parts, of the upper Midwest, of course, we've got the warm front up there under the northern plains as well. That's where we're going to have in those circled areas record warm lows, plenty of 60s, even some low 70s to go around for morning lows over this region. And then as we head in the high temperature department Tuesday afternoon, 70s and 80s from the Midwest Ohio Valley down towards the southeast coast and the Gulf Coast, especially there in Texas, very hot. Now skipping head to Wednesday afternoon, same deal. Thursday afternoon, you guessed it, same deal in the temperature department, although you can see a little bit more of that clash, and that could be begin our next severe weather event there, obviously, and it's Central Plains and parts of the Midwest Mississippi Valley Thursday. That, that's what I hinted at earlier in the video. Right behind that, at the end of next week, going into next weekend, this will probably be a frost and freeze event for a lot of areas. So we're entering growing season. You're going to be needing to be ready to cover sensitive vegetation here in a lot of the central and eastern U.S. as we head towards April 19th through 23rd, which is what that outlook was just showing there, even a little earlier the further north you go. Here is your 6 to 10 day precipitation outlook, and you can see a lot of areas in the Great Lakes behind that likely cold front drying out only exception with wetter than average conditions, maybe on up there in Maine, especially in Texas. Remember, there's things like wind, other things that I didn't even touch on here in this video. Always check weather.gov. That's your latest National Weather Service forecast. Hit subscribe for more videos just like this one in the future. And check out Weather Bell Maps down in the description. That's it for this video. Have a blessed day, as always.